I would love to introduce y'all to Chase Bathia, our next speaker. He is an award-winning video game composer and technical audio designer. He's been in the industry for 11 years and shipped 21 different games. So without further ado, let's get some hype in chat for Chase. Hi, welcome to my talk, Hunting with Hits, Temple Slaying Monsters in Harmony. My name is Chase Pathia. I'm a video game composer, and today I'm going to be talking to you about different concepts that we worked with for the game Questlight Pocket. So when I was a child, I got this feeling every time I saw the Pokemon logo. It was a sensation that I received throwing a real Pokeball on the grass, seeing my Psyduck or my Golduck pop out. It was so riveting. And I lived in Chicago in a high rise building. My best friend lived on the 15th floor and I stayed with my grandmother on the sixth floor. My friend phoned me and thought it, to see if I was home. And I was. When he arrives, he bangs on the door. Do, 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 do. And I open the door and he says, you gotta play this. And I say, can you say hi first? Hi, you gotta play this. He was talking about Pokemon Red. And I did play it. And once I did, I was all in since then. If you fast forward, if I'm playing Monster Hunter on the PS2 and I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm fighting this monster or this dragon all for some epic armor loot. Now, what if we conflated both of those genres and did something with that? Well, that's what Quest Light Pocket is. So Quest Like Pocket was developed by Sprite Wrench Studios, who is founded by Glenn Henry, who lives in Jamaica. And so he hired me to be the composer and mostly like the technical audio designer to help build this rhythm-based monster hunting RPG that's available on Google Play. So how did we go about getting into the design overall for this rhythm-based monster hunting RPG? Well, each monster encounter type will have a specific combat piece that unearths musical layers based on the player skill in combat. So if you encounter any of these four type of monsters under these categories of common, uncommon, rare, or legendary, there will be a very specific piece of music that will play according to the encounter type that the player will happen to pretty much enact. So with the music design, and I'll get into further detail, details about this later, it was very important that it had to be 60 BPM. 60 BPM means beats per minute. And I have a metronome here just to kind of give an idea of what 60 BPM is. So that is the tempo of what the music had to be a foundation for. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. We, Glenn and I had discussed that 30 to 60 seconds would be around the mark that we wanted to kind of make sure that we were in the ballpark for not being too overwhelming. And then there's something that he designed called non-reactive layers and reactive layers. So it was my turn to translate and put it into different, if there's two layers, then I can split it into four different types to make up cohesive songs. We have melody, which would be a non-reactive, and I'll explain that later. Percussion, which is reactive based on how the player skills are. The baseline, which is also reactive as well in tandem, and possibly a counter melody, which will determine what that actually translates to in just a moment. Now, what I like to do is I like to bring about sonic identity to games. So I pull together a sample palette. And when I was pulling sound libraries together, I was using this notepad and I realized it wasn't really that functional and it looked kind of messy. So I ended up translating it to a spreadsheet. And what the spreadsheet did was 
increased my efficiency and workflow tremendously because I didn't have to dig through sounds to see what was going to work. I could just go straight to them. And so you'll see probably at the bottom, I have, there's a sound effect tab just for Glenn to kind of base where things are for them. I didn't do any of the sound effects in that respect. I was just focusing on the music. And then I have a sound palette tab, soundtrack data tab for the releasing the soundtrack later on, and then a pre-order email list. So this is mostly called an audio asset list sheet. And if you're familiar with the talks I've done, I talk about this often, but I've added sound palette into this for a very specific reason. And it'll come about why in this next example. So for one of the first tracks that we we're going to be listening to is called The Nerve of Them. Now, when we were starting to test this idea of 60 BPM, I was free to do any time signature that I really wanted to do. So I stuck all the combat tracks from 5-4, as long as, he said, the bass line is funky. So I kept it funky. <laughs> But baseline is not enough to keep the player engaged. We need to add some percussion. And I knew that I wanted to be engaging. So we went ahead and I designed a percussion element that would go with it. So right now you're listening to the texture that is also another layer. So as I was mentioning, there are different layers. We have the melody layer, we have a baseline layer, we have a counter melody, which is now redefined as the texture layer. And But we didn't listen to the melody layer for the nerve of them. So let's take a listen to that now. So this next piece is for a different monster encounter type where we're talking about the different ones of common, uncommon, rare, and legendary. And I won't spoil it for where these things kind of go, but this piece is called I'll Take All the Aggro. And so by now, I have an idea of we know that the system works. We've tried it out. And so I'm just going to be diving a little bit more into the percussion element of how these things come about. And I'll be talking through these examples as we go. So just, just for the percussion layer itself, we're starting with our Darbuka drum. Now I'll be adding in different drum elements. We have a dull. And now we're adding in the bass line. And as soon as we go through this loop, we should be adding in the texture. So there are different elements that are happening within this piece for, for more interactive layers for how the player is playing.
and we're adding in different instruments. Now we'll be adding in the melody. And every time we're adding something in, this is just for more player variety so it doesn't get monotonous. So by the time that I was getting into the flow of these tracks now, I wanted to add a little bit heavier of percussion to express the seriousness of combat that was increasing based on the, the monster encounter. And so I started experimenting with different drums from different regions, such as Hawaii and other South Pacific islands. And since this is a video game, I got excited about bringing in African and Caribbean drums to be thrown in there as well from the previous pieces that you just listened to, The Nerve of Them and I'll Take All the Aggro. And I wanted this to feel like a hunting prep drum circle dance. And so pulling in Madal drums from Nepal and Pahu Pahu drums from Hawaii, it really gave me this interesting percussive drum section sound. And it really feels like the world is coming together to make that drum circle happen. So starting with the Pahu Pahu, adding the Madal and the hand drums. We'll go from there. So we have the djembe. Then we have some kind of classical bass drum, different type of tribal drums, and then we should have the full section. can't help myself. I want to drum too every time I hear it. So <laughs> just wanted to, to add the extra elements in there. So that was just the one layer of You Want to Crush Me Too, which is the piece that's playing now. So now we're going to talk about, or I'm going to, exp I'm going to exhibit the other parts of the layers that are encompassed within this and how it comes together. So for this one, this is the texture. And we have a Saz Baglama, which is kind of a instant bowl, Middle Eastern type of instrument. And now we're in the melody, the melody layer. So 
So now the texture layer and the melody layer are playing together. No percussion, no bass line. So now if we add the bass line and the percussion, let's see what that sounds like. Let the bass have some. All right, bring it back. So those are the music examples of how I was able to achieve all the one part of the layers to it. So let's take it the overall design. Like I said, Glenn and I wanted to make the combat very interesting. He was gratified by the timing mechanic of it, which I'm going to explain very soon, and because he wanted the, to be easy for players to understand and wanted more engagement. So with that, he was leaning to the idea of a music game genre without dispatching the initial combat concept, which is why it turned into a rhythm-based monster hunting RPG. And so I was talking about those layers before. And so I have this, if you look to the right side, you can see it says non-reactive layers. It's a little monster like non-reactive layer. And then you see the little mouth there that's it's actually a tile. And this is very important. And it says reactive layer. And so when the tile goes up to that middle little GPS marker, that's when, that's part of the understanding how the rhythm is going because it is reacting to the actual music itself. So the reactive layer augments and changes based off the player. So remember the reactive layers were bass lines, the texture, and the percussion. And reactive layer also lays set on markers for, for the tracks. So when it's, if you hit it on time, based off of what's going on, then you'd be doing good in combat. But the non-reactive layers do not change. And luckily there's only one, and that's the melody layer. So no matter what monster counter and type you have, whatever melody layer I have composed, will always play, it will never change. And so all I had to do to get this kind of going and set up was just, as you saw, section out everything into one category of the bass layer, melody, percussion, and texture. And when it comes time to hacking and whacking, there's a few technical limitations that we had to consider. And that was that the tiles are based on the music speed, which is why 60 BPM was so important. So if you notice in every one of the tracks that I've done, it's always 60 BPM. However, the time signature was fun to play around with because I never have heard in any video game, any combat music consistently for fighting things in a 5-4 type of type of signature. I'm getting a little bit nerdy, but if you want to talk to me more about it, we can. And there was a determination of what's the fastest we can go. So 60 BPM was that foundation. And there were a few workarounds that Glenn had shared that said that increasing the speed of the tiles had to match the BPM, but you have to feel the rhythm of the combat in order for that to work. So telling is one thing, showing is another. Let's take a look at how it all comes together. <sighs> And yes, it is score-based. You can possibly score an S tier if you do really well. I've only done it one time. And yeah, I definitely posted on my social media. So here's another example type. I believe this one's for the uncommon. And let's take a look at one more example. Oh, this person's doing good. Let's see what they get. Ooh, a C. I was thinking it was going to be an A. Loot and recapitulation, it's a fancy way of saying <laughs> conclusion, 
and 60 VPM tempo for the base foundation, like I was saying before, that was something that at least a good to have a standard to go off of and build upon. And layers on layers make layers for slayers. I came up with this. It basically is just saying, hey, when we were talking about non-reactive layers and reactive layers, I come up with melody layers, baseline layers, percussion layers, and texture layers for putting it together to make slayers out of players. <laughs> so many errors right in that sentence but the biggest thing i want to actually sh showcase is it was so cool like i have talked about in the beginning of how the genres are conflated now the monster types are actually indicative of where you are in your actual regional location something similar to like pokemon go which is why i mentioned that in the beginning and then the monsters themselves being wherever you are in location that you might encounter. So you may get a legendary if you're in a different area in real time in your life on your phone, or you might get just more common monsters. And so conflating these genres I thought was really, really cool and unique. And the composition pre-production prep is super effective in spreadsheets. And that was the sound palette thing that I was pulling in to give Quest Light Pocket that sonic identity. I didn't have to dig around for the inspiration of things. Once I took my time and collected the names of the of the files or the, the libraries themselves, got an idea of what I wanted. It was either just kind of pull them in and work with them and stick with that because then you get to hunt in harmony and then cool things like an overall concept of video happens like this. So yes, the soundtrack for Quest Like Pocket is out. It's available on all streaming platforms and Bandcamp. More importantly, the game is out and it's on Android. So you can play for yourself and get a feeling of the rhythm. Again, I'm Chase Bathia, professional video game composer. I've been scoring games in the industry for 11 years and shipped about 21 games in that time and working on many, many more. If you'd like to talk to me about this talk today or any other cool nerdy 5-4 stuff that I've mentioned, this is how you can reach me. Attendees and staff, I wanted to thank you so much for coming to the talk. And thank you, Sprite Studios, as well, for the collaboration with Questlight Pocket. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chase, for that lovely talk. Did anyone find any inspiring quotes? If so, make sure you're sharing them on all the social medias. Make sure you add hashtag GDOC Expo and share away.